Hey guys, let's keep working on Pong 2.0 so we can make this game better and better and better. So let's review a little bit about what we've got so far. We have our keyboard commands to where if you have the keys down, it moves. If you have the keys up, it stops. Nice job getting that in. If you're this far, and then we have Pong Math to where every time it bounces off the platform, we add one to the score. We also have our text showing up and we call the information from our variable. And our variable was put in up here. So make sure you have all these pieces in place because we're going to continue building on this and we are going to add some sound. Because right now, if we run the program, you can't hear anything. There's no bouncing around. And if you remember back when the video I showed you, there was some uh, pong noises that happened. So my plan is, we're going to put some sound every time the Pong hits the edge, it'll make a noise. Every time it hits the platform, it'll make a different noise. All right, let's go ahead and put that in play. Already we have a connection here with Pong bouncing off platform. You see that inside my Pong math? So I'm saying if the Pong bounces off the platform, then I want you to do this, which is adding one. Well, let's add one more piece of code in there that says, let's play a sound. I'm going to bring in the sound. I went to the world toolbox, dropped it down, grabbed the play sound code, dropped it in. I'll click on this little uh, down arrow and I'm going to choose. That pulls up this big old menu and there's like a ton of sounds in here. Don't waste your time looking through each and every single sound. Just kind of go, hmm, I want a quick sound because you're going to hit edges a lot. So you don't want something that carries on and on and on and on each time you hit the edge. You want something that goes boop and moves on. Okay, That would be maybe a bell, maybe an explosion, maybe a pop, you know, something like that. I'm going to go underneath here. I'm going to grab something like this. Oh, that's too loud. Well, I mean too long. I want something a little bit quieter. Uh, a little bit shorter here. Oh, that was a little bit better. Oh, did you hear how quick that was? Uh, too long. Yeah, that's good. Maybe a little... Yeah, that's kind of fun. Let's go with this cute water bubble. I'm going to go with that one. So each time it hits the platform, it should make that little sound. You ready? Let's try it out. So nothing... Oh, and did you hear that? Hit the platform hit the platform a couple times. You could hear how many times it uh, put the sound out there. Now let's go ahead and refresh that because we've got a really slow moving Pong there. Let's make sure. Yep. 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 Okay. Now let's go ahead and put in the every time it connects to the edge. Now I don't have a separate function for if the Pong touches the edge. So I'm going to add, go ahead and add one. I'm going to go back to the functions. I'm going to set it up outside of the main program and then bring it in. So let me grab this function. going to bring it down to the end here. And I'm going to call it edge noise. No spaces, don't forget. going to jump back over to my controls because I got to tell it if, because I want, if something is occurring, I want you to do this. Back here to the sprites, if Pong bounces off edges, okay, going to bring it into the text, not down below, but into that little text bubble there. Going to label it Pong, bounces off edges. I want it to play a sound back to world. Scroll to there. There's play sound. Going to bring it in. And again, I want a short sound. I don't want to choose a really long one that goes on and on and on. And I don't know which one you would like to do. Let's go ahead and grab explosions. See if there's something. Uh, that's too long. Ooh, that's nice, but not quite what I was looking for. Ooh, fun, but too long. So remember, we're looking for something kind of short. You can see the amount of seconds underneath. 
See, I'm going to want to focus on something that's less than a second. Do you see that? That's good. Hear how quick that was? Radioactive zombie explode. I just had to find out. I like this one. I'm going to stay with this one. Playful game explosion. So now if I go ahead and play it, everything should work if I have my function called. So let's go up to my functions. <clears throat> Single layer function, bring that in. And I'm going to call it, oh, what was it? Edge noise. Okay, pretty easy because we keep building more things to make it more interesting. And then we just call it into the main program run. See, every time it's hitting the edge, <laughs> it's making plenty of noise. <laughs> All right. Holy cow. Lots of noise. Very fun. <clears throat> okay, let's go ahead and bring in a background because we're going to make it look kind of interesting too, right? <clears throat> But one of the things we're going to watch in the background is that the text is written on this plain background here. And we set that background color to white. Now you can change the color to whatever you wanted, and that's fine. But if we're going to bring in a sprite to make a background sprite, we can't make it the same size as the full screen. So I'm going to bring back in my Create Sprite my variable sprite. I'm going to go ahead and call it BGD again. And there's several different ways I can go about doing this. I'm going to choose the background, which is Sci-Fi 1. Now if I play it, everything is fine, but I couldn't see the word score up in the top. That's because this is layering over the top. So let's adjust the size of our sprite. So come back to your sprite controls, and we're going to choose sprite height. All right, I'm going to drop that in. And now I'm going to say BGD. I don't want it a full 100% of height. I'm going to type in like 180. Let's see what that gives us. Ah, we kind of have the background. We have some space. We can see the score. Okay, things are working pretty good. I want my height a little higher, so I'm going to jump all the way up to 350. Let's see what that does. Ah, it covers up my score just a little bit. Let's drop it down to 320. Let's see what that does. Ah, look at there. So, I kind of have a score up at the top. I've got my background covering most of it. I'm going to change the background color to maybe uh, blend in a little bit more. Let's change it to maybe to yellow. We could always uh, do some, this is a red, green, blue mix, and you can push in different numbers there, and that's just how it mixes the colors of red, green, blue to come up with a new color. But for right now, I'm going to use a preset color of yellow, and let's see what that looks like. Okay, maybe a little bit bright, but it does kind of match with the color motif that we've got going on. All right, so in this video, you added in some sounds. Cool. You brought your sounds in. Okay, make sure you bring your functions in. And we also have our new background sprite and the height brought in. There is another way you can bring in your background if you want it full size. But that means you would have to go into your animation, go to your background, find your uh, find your area at the top and you need to erase that section where your score is. Let me go ahead and give you a quick demonstration of that. If I bring in a different background, it doesn't matter because I'm just going to uh, do it really quickly. Let's grab this and I'm going to grab my eraser, make it as large as possible. 
and I'm going to go ahead and erase a big section of this. And now I'm not going to worry about making it perfect right now because I'm just going to do it for a demonstration. So I'm going to pause the video here and I'll erase it. Just a second. Okay, so here's my hurried, quick erase job. It's pretty hacked on the edges. You'd want to make something that looks a whole lot nicer if you're going to do it in a game for real. But I thought I would show you real quickly that if I went ahead and erased that edge, I can come down here, change it from sci-fi to the city view. It's entirely, I'm not going to worry about setting the height right now. So it's the full size screen. Now watch this. Okay, did you see the uh, score shows through because we made that clear and transparent. So I have two different ways to add in a background. I'm going to go back to the sci-fi one and I'm going to bring back in my sprite height which was BGD and I think it was 320. Let's make sure that works. Yep, there we go. So now we have our score. When we do our score to a certain level in our next video, we're going to change our background. Maybe even change our sounds, maybe even change our token. Because when score equals 10, maybe a whole bunch of things could happen and we could change the entire game over. But we're just going to do one thing at a time. Don't freak out. Another thing we're going to do is add a sprite across the bottom that whenever your Pong or your token hits that bottom sprite, it will deduct one from your lives. That way there will be an end to the game rather than just playing it and 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 playing it. And playing it. it must come to an end. All right, good job. Have some fun. Get some cool sounds in here. Keep coding.